to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original. <laughs> unsurmountable wireless woman welcoming you back to room 303 while there still is one if you are new welcome to my crew but my returnees you know what we do if you like this video well then like it <laughs> let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe well go ahead on and subscribe but before you blink share this link welcome back wi-fi's to yet another episode another transmission of the wireless woman today i will be giving you my black thoughts on black kanye this is the dark side of kanye this is the anakin turned darth yay that's what we'll call him darth yay <laughs> but before i get to deep into today's content you already know what time it is what are we gonna do tomorrow night the same thing we do every night pinky try to take over the world it is time for today's transmission don't get captured all right welcome back wi-fi's to this episode my black thoughts episode of the wireless woman go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video or dislike it you know whatever floats your boat but when you like it though you know what i love it also if you haven't already subscribe to this channel <laughs> And make sure that you click the notification bell for uploads of when I go live. But it's all about the process and trusting the process. And processes build products. This is something in the Black community that we need to start paying attention to. Because when we look around at the degradation, at the demolition of our institutions, it's because we have become a group of people who believe in capitalism, who believe in commercialism, who love products without understanding processes. And like, I'm preaching good right now because I'm getting ready to talk about Kanye. <laughs> And this is why he finds himself in this particular position as well, where he has built something. He has built an empire. And yes, a lot of people are going to say that he's tearing it down from the inside. And I agree from the inside out that no one else is doing this to yay. This is yay all by himself. But I do also feel, though, that there is an element to how black people build that has fragility, that has, um, that has insecurity built into it that causes our empires not to stand the test of time. Because like I said, process, process over product works every time. If the process is correct, the product is going to come out correct. But I'm in a rabbit hole. Let me get out. Okay, so, you know, I don't really watch TV like that. And I don't keep up with other people's lives. I have so much going on in my own. But even though I could care less, I could not possibly care less. I do feel like there are some lessons for us as black people, as a people, to glean from the, I don't know what you call this, I don't know what you call this, the de-evolution of Ye, simply because he is iconic as a black man. Call him what you want to. As Ye said, he's the only rapper that's been compared to Michael, which that's changed since he said that. But my point is, 
He is iconic for everything that we can say about him, much like Tupac, much like Andre, much like Nas and Mm Jay-Z. Heavy on the eye roll. He has been the voice of the Black community at certain periods of time. And to see this happening to him, I think, is a reverberation. It's a projection of something that we need to begin to be cognizant of in the Black community. And that's the only reason why I'm speaking on it today. So Kanye is starting to devolve. And a lot of Black people are saying, Kanye isn't crazy. Kanye knows exactly what he's doing. Kanye is telling the truth. Kanye, it, baby, he y'all black Trump. It's just too wild. You would follow him over the edge of a cliff. Let's not be lemurs. Let's be learners. Kanye is off his medication. And he said it himself, name one genius that ain't crazy. I'm going to tell you something about me. I'm a, I'm a Kanyeite. And I rode, rode, rode the boat. I rode the bus. I ride or died. And I never thought I would come to a place where Ye and I would part. Me and Ye us never part. My key da da. Me and you us never part. My key da da. Like, I, I ride for Ye. I can quote Ye like I quote the Bible. And I never thought I'd see a day <laughs> where I would dissent with much of anything he's had to say because he has been the voice of my generation in a lot of ways. However, I can speak a little bit on both sides of this because One, I have been in music and entertainment and theater and art and dance. And two, I have an anxiety disorder. And it it, it can show up a lot of times like ADHD. You know, ADHD people can share common traits with bipolar people simply because when it comes to the way the brain works and functions, disorders aren't even necessarily like you're crazy. It's just that your level of what's considered normal for you may deviate from societal norms. And for that reason, they have to put you into a category in order to be able to manage you, to deal with you. In order for you to know what to expect from yourself, you have to understand how your particular mind works and how that may be deviant from other people. And mostly all creatives are deviants. So, Kanye's genius has been the thing that has caused him to come to the greatness that he's at. But that same genius is is born out of, you know, creativity. It's born out of deviating from normal thought patterns. So with creatives, a lot of times when they do become depressed, people like Robin Williams, you know, you don't necessarily see the signs of it because they've been performative for so long. They know how to mask. You know, other people will mask with drugs and alcohol. That's what they tried to say was going on with Prince. (laughs) This man OD'd and we all know. Okay, I'm not going to go there, but my point in what I'm saying is a lot of artists mask with performative behavior, with drugs, with these things, because the body is not meant to handle fame. There's an anxiety that comes with being in front of crowds. Most people just call it stage fright. But being in a prolonged state of anxiety like that creates a chemical imbalance in your brain. It it took a lot of study for me to actually find out that stepping back from that limelight when I'm used to the pumping adrenaline night after night of doing performances, of doing shows, of getting in front of people, and as Eminem would say, losing yourself. In the music, the moment you own it, you better never let it go. Oh, there is, he, uh, Eminem described it perfectly. The sickening 
deafening feeling of being on stage. There are times I would go on stage to perform a song and forget every single lyric to the song as soon as the music started. And I would panic, 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 panic. It would be 10 seconds of woo, mind numbing, blood boiling, cat anxiety before that beat would drop and I would like the note would just come the music would just come through you almost it would just teleport you and the connection that you have with the audience and I never even did it on the scale that people like Kanye have done it where you've been in the energy of millions and being expected like an antenna to channel what everyone in that room came to see what everyone in that room came to need from you because when you're a performer and you have a bad night Oh, baby, the energy, <laughs> the crowd will either love you or hate you. They are merciless. And back in my day, when I used to do music, we had like artist development and all this different stuff. Like you couldn't even be backed by a label. And these were the same years when Kanye was coming, you know, into the industry because we're the same age. You had to prove yourself. You know, like all that time he was producing, wanted to be that person on the stage. You had to do a lot of preparation to get into that space. Now people are instantly stars, but that amount of stress on the mind and the body, it just takes a toll over time. I know everyone's saying this happened after Kanye was mother died, but Kanye's mom, he he loved her. Don't get me wrong. Grief has a profound effect on the mind and on a life. But when you're already talking about a person who's chemically imbalanced, it's a contributing factor. It's just another contributing factor to behavior that was already problematic. Let's be honest. He already was saying that stuff. I had a dream I could buy my way to heaven. When I awoke, I spent that on a necklace. I told God I'll be back in a second. Man, it's so hard not to act reckless. So here's the thing. We were already dealing with a Kanye that told you, you can't tell me nothing. First of all, he's a Gemini. So I don't know how y'all can follow someone who is already double-minded, who is already of two minds. He said, I could have a good girl and still be addicted to a hood rat. Okay. He said, the, he he told us the best thing you can do is run away from me. Like, this is lucid Kanye. This is pre-breakdown <laughs> Kanye. We we was already dealing with a Gemini. So. <laughs> okay. But my issue is that Kanye was is mentally ill. He's a sick man, he could potentially be on the verge of becoming a casualty of mental health and mental illness. We saw in the 90s, I'm a child of the 80s. I, I'm an 80s baby. So I saw the whole era of artists in the 90s that expired. Kurt Cobain, Lane Stately, Shannon Hoon from Blind Melon, these these artists that were trapped in mental health crises that didn't get addressed because of their celebrity, because of their fame. Instead of being addressed, it got fed into. It got appeased. A lot of those artists did a lot of drugs to mask because I'm telling you that anxiety in front of audiences it's enough to make you crawl up in a corner, shivering in the fetal position all night. You know, I was one of those people that there there were times where I got to where like I would drink before I went on, but because it gets you open, artists are mediums. They don't actually make the music. Music comes through you. You're a medium between the spirit realm and the natural realm. That's why they pay them so much. That's why they pay them so well, because they're there to channel whatever people want. Some channel demons, some channel angels, 
You ever been to church and there's that woman that open her mouth and it breaks your heart. Woo, the tears fall down. The hands go up and worship ensues. You know, and if you are an artist, you are a worshiper. That's why most people that emulate them will take on that same element. And Kanye has told us from the beginning the things that he worships and he believes in. Even in Jesus Walks, Kanye talks about the struggle between good and evil. And he said, you know, that the devil was coming for him, for his soul. And his hope was that Jesus would walk with him. And we can't say yet who has won. But what I can say is that Kanye doesn't need to be followed. He needs to be prayed for. He needs to be held accountable. He needs to be put on a routine and a regime that's going to help him get healthy. You know, he's taken a lot of loss here. And it's been losses of his own making. But my issue is even a broken clock is right twice a day. There are paraplegics and they have something called ghost limbs. The feeling, the animation of the limbs is not there anymore. There are people that are in comas and you'll see them blinking and they'll be doing things and the family just holds on to hope. They're like, well, no, don't pull the plug. And the doctors are like, this person's brain dead. That is just signals coming from the brain that don't mean anything. But the family's like, no, that's that's proof. There's still activity there. There's still life there. And that person is gone. It's just a body. It's just chemical reactions. And Kanye is home. But the lights are not on. And you are following someone who has shown the propensity to double back on what they believe. He's a person that led us all to believe that he was marrying the woman who was the love of his life, his greatest fantasy. Now, we're all supposed to believe she's been controlling him and keeping him from his kids and she's a villain. And okay, he's a person who was told by sway some of the best advice that one black man can give another. He said, build something for this community that one is going to belong to you and it's going to allow you to control it and to give back to your own community. Don't do this deal with Adidas. He was one that got on the records, told us to trust all these people, all these commercial companies and told Sway in so many words to kiss his ass. Just to turn around decades later, these 20 years later and say to Sway, Sway had the answers. Sway had the answers to turn around now and want us to hate and boycott all the companies that he used to sell us all the stuff he wanted us to buy. It is narcissistic, bipolar, mentally ill behavior at its best. Gotcha. Gotcha. And the closest thing I can liken Kanye West's behavior to is the other Gemini, Donald Trump, his mentor. And when we as black people were watching white people divide and split and run back and forth in confusion and darkness behind Donald Trump, we was like dismayed by that. Not some of us, because I'm starting to find out what I already knew based on the fact that he won the election in the first place, which is that a lot of black men... And I'm just saying black men because it's more y'all than black women. But a lot of black men support, believe in, follow Donald Trump, his logic, all that. So it only naturally follows that they would believe, trust, follow, listen to Kanye West as well. But this is a man literally who has built up things just to tear them down. So when we talk about the community at large. When we talk about all the institutions we've seen come and go because of outside mechanisms, 
Now we're watching the destruction come from the inside out. Black people have become so used to having the things that they love taken away that they've started to burn those things down ahead of time. If you've ever seen the movie Beloved, which if you haven't, you need to. That's what happens. Oprah Winfrey's character. And, you know, y'all know I don't never be knowing characters names, but I know who play them. But Oprah Winfrey's character decides to kill her children to keep the master from getting to them. The life of a slave is something that is so bitter. It's so difficult. It's so disparaging that even the hope of giving your children a better life is extinguished by the woes of this life as a slave that she would rather kill her children, send them to paradise, than have them live in a world where they will be slaves. And we don't see the pathology behind it. But this is what Kanye West is doing. He burned his family to the ground. He's burning his career to the ground. And I think there's a narcissistic element behind it that he may even think to himself, like, I'm going to see if I can build it all again. But. He's definitely ill. We're just looking at the sparks of a Kanye that left a long time ago. Yes, some of the things he is saying is right. It is true about black people. It's the lessons that his mother put into him. It's being raised by people who were intellectuals. It's the information that he's ingested. And at one point in time, in one moment in time, at that moment in time, Kanye put so much into us and put so much into the culture that he could be trusted. So, yeah, some of those unifying monumental things that he's capable of doing and saying they come up, but these are just the ghost of Kanye past. This is just the ghost of Kanye past. This is the house settling, those creaks that you hear. And yeah, I love Kanye, but he's never going to be the same Yay, He even said, I miss the old Kanye. And I'm quoting all this Kanye because I need you to understand. I, I love Kanye for who he was to us as black people, but he's been martyred. He's been sacrificed. And... What we're seeing now, you cannot trust Kanye to be your spiritual leader. I mean, he had one of the hottest gospel albums. This man go from secular, the gospel, and you follow them there. He's, he's wanting to be a political figure. Y'all would change your political affiliation right now to the Yay Party if he had an actual whole platform from which to run for office. I mean, I don't know if he's still going to try to do that. Your social platforms are being built by a man who's not even at the helm of his own ship. And if I take the needle off the record for a second and be real, this makes me lose faith and confidence in black men if y'all really think this guy is your savior. When he's he's shown an inability to lead even his own family. When he didn't even choose black people to build businesses with, to build families with. But, but you really believe he has the salvation of black men and black people and the black community in him. That's that's super weird. I hope one day that we as a people will have the type of black leadership that has not been set up by our oppressors. I hope one day that we are not just these disenfranchised people who were left in the country of their enslavement. I hope one day for the black nation to rise as its own sovereign entity that is not codependent on white nationalism and white Christian supremacist values 
to exist. I hope one day that we'll always as black people have to be interdependent with white people in this country. I know the things that I say make it seem like I hate them. It, I don't. And I don't think equality with them is something to be desired because I think we have something greater and better to offer white society than competing with them. I don't think that's a fair competition. But we've allowed even our icons to be shaped and molded by this institution. And yay is the proof that if you follow that logic, because he told us from the beginning what to buy, what to wear in a pink polo with a backpack. He set that trend from the beginning and it has led him down a rabbit hole to insanity. Where do you think it's going to take us? I'd like you to tell me in the comments what the logical deduction of following somebody who's running back, back, forth, and forth like Aaliyah, somebody who's looking like Venus and Serena Williams playing doubles in the tennis match. But a lot of times you delude yourself, especially people who are out in front of other people, into thinking you don't need that help when you actually do. Because you have different types of mental illness. You have mood disorders, and then you actually have like psychosis and things that can be treated with a counselor, but then you have things that need to be treated with a psychiatrist. Therapy and psychiatry are two totally different wings of that bird. So I'm a person who can be treated with therapy, with counseling, and at times with mood-altering drugs, but some people need an antipsychotic. And that's a different type of drug. But what I can say is the effect of those drugs is cumulative over time. And what happens is your brain chemistry begins to stop producing certain chemicals in order to match what's going on with those drugs. If you stay on those medications long enough, you'll actually do what they call plateau. And the mechanisms in your brain will start to shift to where they'll either have to up your medications or change it to something else because your body won't regulate over that time the same way. So if someone's put on an antidepressant now, 10 years from now, they're going to either have to change it or up the prescription because the body adjusts. Just the same way a cut would heal and now you're, you're back to a certain homeostasis. Your body is always fighting for a natural homeostasis that's going to reject that drug every time. Like we're, we're trying to fix ourselves. So then they have to make an adjustment now to put you back in your pen. Okay. <laughs> when they say off your meds, they mean off your meds. This is not like a hangover from drinking too much the night before. That stuff will drive you crazy if you try to come off of it cold turkey. So with a doctor's help, I stepped my way into it. And when it became too much for me, I had to half appeal my way out. <laughs> and as I was coming down, as I was coming out, I was highly unstable, highly volatile. And it's just having that self-awareness that it's going to take a minute for you to reach homeostasis again. But if you're dealing with and any psychotic, if you're dealing with a person who is psychotic, and like I said, you use these terms about mental health and it's polarizing. People get upset and mad about it. He's not crazy. He's not crazy. He's not crazy. He's abnormal. Geniuses are abnormal. Autistic people are abnormal. What is normal anyway? Miguel asked that question. What is normal anyway? But this normal for them that allows them to function in this society sometimes needs help. We all need help sometimes. And what help looks like for each one of us is different. And I believe a lot of crazy people just actually don't belong here. Some of them are angels that we entertain unaware of. I always thought that about my sister, and she was a schizophrenic. She would talk to herself, but I always felt like my, my sister talked to angels. Talk to angel. 
I always felt like she could see things that other people can't see. And I'm going to tell you some of the best conversations I've ever had was with them crazy people underneath the bridge. It was with my sister because they be on it. I mean, they be off. But they be on it. Like when they, we used to think conspiracy theorists were crazy, but now when they talk, you be like, Let's get it. Hop off a 16 passenger. This a G5. No, this not a challenger. Big one. I, I have never seen Bruce Wayne and Batman in the same room together. Coincidence? I think not. I mean, they start putting stuff together in a way you don't even have time in your organized brain to think about. And most of it is great as an artist. Because they bring these overlooked elements of society into their art. Comedians, rappers, singers, songwriters, you know, they make us all stop and pause and look at the world in a different way. So, yeah, when Kanye starts spitting, you be like, he got a point. That do make sense. But you can't, fall, you can't build. <laughs> Kanye build a church. You can't build a, the church of Kanye in your mind and, and, and put a shrine to this man where he can do no wrong and follow him into psychosis. We had lots of stars that burned out that we lost too soon. Because they were in a state of something, but we were so busy clapping and applauding them. And this is actually, like I said, my indictment against black women when it comes to black men, because we have caused a lot of this narcissism that now we're dealing with. And now they spreading through the community that they didn't got a passport to go take to somebody else's country and, and populate the earth with degeneracy. But as a person who, like I said, was in the arts, one of the hardest things to do was to step back away from doing music and theater. I was really big into theater. I loved doing shows and acting and not being on stage every night, not being in a show, not, you know, this podcast and it's cool, but you do this by yourself. The energy you get off a crowd is different. People mimic that feeling with followers and all this stuff on Facebook, but it's not the same. You know, Instagram, TikTok fame is not the same kind of fame. You know, fame, I'm gonna live forever. You know, back then we had to fight for fame. You know, we had to get there. And when you step back out of the light into that shadow, there's a lot of shadow work you got to be willing to do. You are no longer using that adrenaline pumping energy to entertain people anymore. You sitting at the house. You watching other people do it like, I, I, I was better than her. I could have I could have been a contender. And Kanye said it best himself. Because what you got to understand, Kanye is prophet. Kanye is poet. He's the best of us and the worst of us. And he told us what to believe and what to expect about him. And you can't follow anybody to the point that you don't believe them about them, that they showing you who they are. And you still like, well, you know, I don't think that he meant it like that. I mean, he did say slavery was a choice, but he also said, Kanye said itself, do you have the power to let power go? I think some of us think that Kanye's gotten too big to be a clout chaser. But we're watching Drake face clout. New media is a god. This here is new. New media. It's taken over. Even the way that old artists became famous, even they are trying to figure out how do we stay relevant. And the one thing that's always kept Kanye relevant is controversy. controversy. But you can't build a community on controversy. And even Kanye said, you got to have the power to let power go. He said, no one man should have all that power. No one man should have all that power. We're creating a monster with this man, and we're partially responsible for what Kanye has turned into. It's time to stop. Pull the plug.
let him go. If there's any Kanye left in there, we can't encourage bad behavior with him. We can't keep doing that. But if you see what I see and you feel like I feel and you seek as I seek. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. Let me know what you think. Is Kanye crazy or is he really the, the one that's got the post on it? Are, are we still going to do this? Are we going to follow Kanye or not? Nah? Like I said, I'm not necessarily here to be right. I'm just here to present a perspective. And I hope to see you in the next transmission. But until then, black out for me. So I would like to thank everyone that was involved with this negotiation.